Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks, and today's project is this floor shine shoe. Now, this is from, I'm guessing from the 90s, okay? It's still old, you know, but it's not the it's not the V cleat with all the nails and the heels um, floor shimes. Um, they're still not still not bad quality. Um, this was, I think, the last days of production going overseas. So it's still a good quality leather line, leather footbed, uh, good quality shoe. Now what we're going to mainly focus on is the footbed today, okay? I'm going to show you guys how we replace the footbed uh, to give the shoe ba basically a new fresh footprint. Yes, we're going to do full soles heels. We're going to do the wood grain pattern on there, uh, dovetail heels with some brass nails, but uh, mainly focusing on the interior part rather than the soles. Okay, so let's get started. Now the trick is to not to disturb this here when we're doing the inside footbed because you don't want to change the shape of the shoe, okay? So we're just going to have to kind of slowly, slowly wiggle our way underneath this footbed. It's not easy to do, but we'll put a little bit of turpentine around the edges. Just to loosen that glue a little bit. Basically what we're doing, we're trying to loosen the footbed from the gemming that's that's holding on to the footbed. Now you're gonna what you're gonna see is you're gonna see the cork and you're gonna see basically the shank. But all that's gotta be replaced once the sole comes off, so don't be too concerned about that. The important thing is now is to loosen that footbed from the gemming and then slowly, slowly pull away the, the footbed away from the shoe. Pour a little turpentine, a little at a time. As you guys can see, slowly coming apart. All right, let's continue. And she is out. As you guys can see, the footbed has seen better days. That dries out eventually, right? Your feet perspire and the leather gets the leather gets dried, wet, dried, wet, and eventually it just starts falling apart. Now, this is the footbed we're going to replace it with. It's a little bit thicker than what you got here originally. We're going to sand that down to thin it down a little bit. Okay? Basically, we're going to make an impression of this size. And then we're going to reinsert it back inside the shoe, only gluing it on the sides where the gemming is. This is the gemming. You guys see that material right there, that zigzag material? That's where, that's the piece that stitched the welt and the uppers all together. Okay. We're not going to worry about the cork or the shank. That's all going to get replaced once we take the bottom part. All right, let's continue. All right, so basically, we're gonna glue this in, just securing the edges, okay? All right, let's continue. Got 
tap the edges a little bit. We're gonna let that dry. Oh, the Beto stamp. You guys see that? Turn the light on a little bit. Oh, the other way. So we'll let this dry and then we'll start tearing the bottom part. All right, let's continue. Oh, good my, my, oh. The reason I don't put oil on that, on that last, because I don't like it spinning. I just don't like it, I don't like it turning. I don't like the head loose. This isn't that loose, but still, I, obviously you can hear it. I just got to put a bolt on there, so. <clears throat> it doesn't um, it doesn't make that screeching noise. So we're gonna reuse this midsole because that is in good shape. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Now what you have here is a new footbed and the size of the shoe did not change. Okay? That's why we did that first. We're going to get rid of this, this fiberglass shank and we're going to put a metal shank in there for him. We're going to put cork on there obviously. And right in the midsection, we're going to put leather on top of the cork. I'm sorry, leather on top of the shank. Duh. I do leather sometimes in the midsection here, okay? I just think it gives a little bit of more of a structural support. Because over time, cork tends to break down. I mean, sometimes I do cork, but sometimes I do leather, but some, most of the time on these, on these gun boats, we'll put, I'll put leather on there. Oh. So I've been reading a lot of comments lately, right? Especially with my last video. There's always people who tend to complain about something and um, had one guy was talking about sharpening you know I sharpen these sometimes right it's just a fine sharpening stone this side's fine this side's rough so basically I just kind of do a couple of like that it gets rid of the rough edges of the of the blade. Well, somebody had an issue with that <laughs> and it called me an idiot. Long story short, one of the comments said that, hey Steve, why don't you focus on the positive comments, which there are, you know, over probably 98%, more than that maybe, which is really, really cool. And don't don't worry about you know. Don't worry about the other guys who would leave stupid comments like that. It's so true, right? It's so true, it's so true that we have to focus on the positive. But the problem is that always that one person that says something gets under your skin, and you can't let it go. Then you got to retaliate. Okay. Retaliate, is that the word? Attack. You know, I'm kidding. So, but I'm gonna try. I'll try my best to stay focused on the positive. But then again, what do I do with the complainer's voice guy? 
I can't use that anymore. That's not good. All right, we'll figure something out. All right, let's continue. You guys smell that? It's coffee time. <laughs> Let's continue. My favorite cup broke again.
See that? There's no handle. Now I gotta resort to my cup holder. I made this a while back for another cup. It's just a piece of leather. I, I stitched the sides to give it that circular shape. and riveted the handle on there. So this was for my other cup that broke. And I made this, it was working fine, but this one, this one literally broke, chipped the top and the handle. So, but I can still use it. I just can't fill it up all the way, which is okay. I'll just refill the cup when it gets empty. Oh, here we've got some, of course, with that bitter coffee, you've got to have something to kind of, you know, balance things out. What is this? Belvita. It's like a cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon cookie type, you know? A little break between jobs. Hope you all having a good day. Cheers. But ow! This foot was so big that that a regular JR sole did not fit, so I had to cut it from this. <clears throat> I had to cut it from this big bend of leather, JR leather. Okay, that's what they call bend. Leather bend. That sucker's huge. This is a size 13, so it was, uh, you know, it didn't fit. It didn't fit. I tell you. <clears throat> sure everything's centered as best as it can get I'm a time. I should show my shirt ah, too late. See, the reason I don't like the last moving, because when I'm hammering, I want that to be right underneath where I'm hammering. When it's too loose, it moves around, and you're not going to get a good contact with the shoe and the sole and the last underneath it, okay? I see so many guys that they're hammering, the sucker's just all over the place. You don't get a, you don't get a nice, even, you know, hammer. It should be nice, a little bit of a, you know, curve right here at the shank and then straight line right there. It shouldn't be curved up. Some people curve it up because of the natural foot shape is a little bit curved, which is fine, but it should be a nice, nice uniform line right there. Okay. That's why I do that. That's why I don't like this sucker moving because I don't have any control when I'm hammering it. It moves around too much. Also, I don't like I don't like the machine that 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 presses the welt because it marks the soles. I, I don't like that. That's why I hammer the welt down like this. Basically, what I'm doing now is I'm getting rid of the air bubbles right in the in the sole and the midsole, so we get a good bond. The only pattern I like to see on the bottom is the one that I put on when I put it on. But this one is so busy that you don't you don't put we don't put any patterns on the sole at all. All right. I guess I overfilled it a little bit. It happens sometimes.
All right, so at this stage, we've got the heel on. Okay, we still gotta trim it. And we have to nail it from the inside, okay? Remember, I was using that tubular nailer the other time, this big hunk of metal. Hunk, hunk of metal. This sucker's heavy. I mean, you could, you could do some damage with this thing. But we're not gonna use this here because it's a shoe. If it was a boot, then we would have, you know, we wouldn't have the space for trying to get to the nails. However, we're going to use a tack hammer. Now, even though it's on the inside, it's going to be covered up with the insole. I still, I still like to keep my nails kind of even. So I made a little template and I just mark, I know this is overboard. Some people might say that, but it doesn't matter. Everybody does it differently. So I take a little tool here, makes my make my holes. I mean, just because of the fact that that you can't see it, why shouldn't you make it space it as even as possible? I, I don't get that. We're going to use 7 8 threaded nails because these are bare to remove once they're in there. Some people call them ring shank nails. In this, in this business, we call them threaded nails. And just basically just... What this is doing is this is clinching the footbed to the heel base and it's securing everything together. Oh, a lot of people have been asking me about my watch. This is not a Rolex. I'm not sure what brand it is. It's it's a no it's a no name watch. It was a gift from one of my viewers. He gave me two of them, as a matter of fact. The other one had the dial red and blue. Kind of cool looking. I'm really appreciative that somebody reached out and knew that I liked watches and sent me a pair. So as you can see, the nails are in there, and then we'll cover that with an insole. I'm gonna trim this and then we're done. All right, let's continue. All right, welcome back. We are done with another project. <clears throat> we didn't focus too much on the actual doing the bottoms, but the most important that he's got a new footbed in there now. He just has to kind of wear it and break it into, you know, mold to his foot. And um, these should last them many, many years to come. Many years. Now, even though the insole did not have the old logo. I put the old logo in there, also stamped the old logo on the soles. And I made a little V cleat pattern. It's just a homage to the V cleats in the past. This is the cousin of the V cleat. Okay, this came with a combination heel originally, um, half rubber, half leather. Not, not a dovetail pattern, but a regular straight line going across there. So it's very similar to what it was. Similar wood grain. This is a little bit more fancier. It's a I beto sized beto's beto's I can't think customized beto sized doesn't make sense beto sized no never mind it just popped in my head and it's out already all right so thank you again for joining me I appreciate it um, some of you guys again wanting to know what my information is like how do they get in touch with me if you go on the main page on the top row it'll say about section Click on that and I'll have my email, my address, my phone number, 
Everything there is to know about me. Okay, if you have any questions, email me. Bedos at yahoo.com. That's B-E-D-O-S at yahoo.com. And I'll do my best to respond in a timely manner. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, please. Thumbs up, comments, mainly good ones. But if you want to sneak a bad one in once in a while, it's all right. I'll handle that. All right, so we'll see you guys on the next project. Take care.